Hey, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our playlist called Signs in Medicine. In the previous video, we have discussed Homan's sign. Today, it's time for Koenig's sign. You can see it in meningitis as well as subarachnoid hemorrhage. With that said, now let's get started. Look at this lovely doctor with hyperkeratinemia. Who was Koenig? Koenig was a Russian and Baltic German internist and neurologist. Some sophisticated people say, actually, Baltic Germany does not have this flag. I know, Rick. Shut up. I'm not a historian. I'm just a doofus sitting in my kitchen. His name was Vladimir Mikhailovich Koenig. This is the most generic Russian name ever. I know, I'm an idiot. I should shut up. And I just want to say thank you, sir. This guy passed away in 1917, and we still use Koenig's sign to this day. Just wrap your head around this. Now, what are the meninges? Meninges are layers that surround your brain and your spinal cord. In other words, they surround your central nervous system. And we have three of these. Dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pia mater. It's mater, it's not matter. Matter means a substance. Mater is Latin for mother. How about father? Father is pater, and paterology is the study of ancient fathers in early Christianity. This is mater, it's like a mother surrounding and hugging your brain. This is so lovely. Nothing breaks my heart than an anatomy professor writing dura mater like this. Like, what are you doing with your life? The second thing that breaks my heart is people who diffuse lavender. I can imagine myself as an anatomy professor swinging my gluteus maximus on day one to the lecture hall. Hey student, please stand up. Okay, professor. What's your name, son? It's Cody. How many mothers do you have, Cody? I only have one mother. Her name is Sally. Oh, this is so sweet. I'm not asking about this. I don't care whether your home is broken or bent. I'm asking about your meninges. You have three mothers. You have the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. Why did we call it dura? Because it's durable. This is the tough mother, literally. She's tough, but she can feel pain thanks to the nociceptors. Arachnoid matters. Arachnoid means spider-like. Why do you call it a mother spider-like? Because it looks like this under the microscope, like a spider net. And then the mother who is hugging the brain directly, the innermost layer, is the PMR, the tender, affectionate mother. Literally, by the way, I did not make this up. Arachnoid mater plus pia mater are collectively known as the leptomeninges. Meninges are meninges. Lepto means thin. The way I remember it, there is a British tea company known as Lipton. And Lipton has a very thin thread that's hanging the tea bag. So lepto means thin. There is also a hormone released by your brain known as leptin. Leptin makes you thin. This mnemonic is great. I love tea. God save the queen. The dura mater, on the other hand, is a pachymenix. Pachy means tough. Yep, she's tough. Menix is singular. Meninges is plural. Microbes are divided into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. That's why microbiology deals with bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. What are the causes of meningitis? Bacteria, fungi, viruses, parasites. Which organism is likely to cause your meningitis will depend on your age. If you are a neonate, it's very different from a teenager, etc. And this is different from the elderly population, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. Not all meningitises are created equal. Bacterial meningitis, that's a freaking emergency. Viral meningitis, ah, it's self-limiting. Viral meningitis is benign relative to bacterial. I just told you that the organism depends on your age. This slide is from Picmonic. If you are a visual learner, this is a dream comes true. These are the causes of meningitis in neonates, age 0 to 6 months. So there you go. Neonatal meningitis. Neonate, men in tights. Number one, you have group B strep. That's a B stripper. And then you have the E. coli. That's the E. coli. And then you got the listeria. That's the lizard. So what are the causes of neonatal meningitis? Group B strep, E. coli, listeria monocytogenes. You can learn about the other bacteria for other age groups at picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. Meningitis, signs and symptoms. What's the difference? Symptom, you as a patient will tell me. 
but sign I, the doctor, will figure it out. Symptoms, let's go, high fever, headache, neck pain, neck stiffness, photophobia, and sometimes rash. Also, nausea, vomiting, and malaise. Signs, Koenig's sign and Brudzinski sign. Today it's time for Koenig's sign. And here is how to perform Koenig's sign. Let the patient lay back on the exam table. Step number two, start raising one leg in a straight line. In other words, start flexing the hip. Three, reach 90 degrees. There is a 90 degree between the patient's torso and the thigh. There is also a 90 degree at the knee between the thigh and the leg or the lower leg to be precise. Now in the last step, you'll start extending the knee joint, which means you get this part and you elevate it even more. If it's a negative sign in a normal patient, nothing will happen. But if this patient has meningitis, you'll get a positive sign. Severe pain, severe discomfort, or inability to extend the knee even more. Okay, medicosis, why is this the case? Why is it painful? in patients with meningitis, because this is stretching the meninges. Oh, I never thought of it this way. It's the way to think of it. You're stretching the meninges, and the meninges are inflamed, aka meningitis, ergo pain. Same thing with Brudzinski sign. You'll be stretching the meninges in another way, and you get the same result in case of meningitis. Koenig sign can be positive in meningitis. Almost everyone knows this, and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Almost no one knows this. How do I diagnose meningitis? History, physical exam with the Koenig's and Brzezinski sign. Listen to the patient's symptoms. Headache, photophobia, fever, neck stiffness, etc. And then stick a needle, aka lumbar puncture between L3 and L5. L3 and L4 is the most common location, and the song is to keep the spinal cord alive. Keep the needle between L3 and 5. Oh, beautiful. Tap the lumbar and then give me some fluid. Give me some cerebrospinal fluid, which happens to be in the subarachnoid space, which happens to be just below the arachnoid mater. Look at it. Look at it. And then respect it. And then look at the white blood cells. Do you see leukocytosis? Uh, what do you mean by leukocytosis? Do you see more than five white blood cells per cubic millimeters? If the answer is no, that's probably a normal subject. If the answer is yes and you find tons of white blood cells, it depends on the type. Are you talking about predominantly neutrophils or predominantly lymphocytes? If it's predominantly neutrophils, neutrophils equals bacterial. Cool. Lymphocytes, now we're talking. It depends. Look at the glucose next. If the glucose is low, it means that's a living organism eating your glucose in your CSF. Oh, so it's fungal or tuberculosis. But if the glucose is normal, that's a non-living organism because viruses are not considered as living as you might imagine. That's why we call them particles and not organisms. In this case, the glucose will be normal. How do we treat vital meningitis? Just conservative management. You do nothing. It's self-limiting. How about bacterial meningitis? That's an emergency. You should give antibiotics. Which antibiotics? It depends. And as they say in New York, it's complicated. To know more about management of meningitis, please check out my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com with 40 videos about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic drugs. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my antibiotics course and my other premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.